A huge weather pattern change is coming to the United States over the next few days, and this will bring more severe weather to areas like the Great Plains, in addition to much colder weather for a large chunk of the United States and a bunch more severe weather systems throughout the rest of May. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today, and we are once again getting over another major severe weather outbreak that just wound down back over in the Ohio Valley and the Dixie Alley where we saw a bunch of tornadoes, lots of wind and hail. Luckily, the storm system is weakening as it approaches the East Coast and overall our low pressure system, which is all the way back up here in the upper Midwest and another one back over in Ohio are now beginning to weaken. And generally speaking, we are not expecting much more severe weather out of this storm system. But as we go into Friday and Saturday, we are expecting another storm system to move over the Rockies. And I do think the return of more severe weather is ahead for areas like the Great Plains, perhaps even the Midwest, and even back through the Ohio Valley. And over the past couple of days, we've had major severe weather outbreaks, and on Monday, we had a major severe weather outbreak across the Great Plains, where over 20 tornado reports have now come in, in addition to over 200 wind and hail reports. It was a major day, almost 600 total reports, making this one of the larger severe weather events that we've had so far this year across the Great Plains. And then yesterday, we have at least so far had at least around 200 wind reports, at least 100 hail reports, in addition to around 11 different tornadoes that have been at least confirmed visually and we will likely get more reports as we go throughout the day today but even yesterday was a tornado outbreak including the tornado emergency that happened near Huntsville Alabama and we also have more news on our deadly tornado outbreak that happened on Friday of last week we end up having two EF4 tornadoes one of which was near Marion Illinois and another one near London Kentucky which unfortunately cost the lives of around 20 people and this was one of the damage photos just to the southeast of Russell Springs which is where one of many tornadoes happened back over in southeast Kentucky. This was at least EF3 damage, and we are expecting to get more reports and as well as photos of the damage from the EF4 tornado in London. So stay tuned for that. But unfortunately, a devastating event that happened across the Ohio Valley, making it one of the deadliest tornado outbreaks that we've had in multiple years. Now let's talk more about the weather pattern that'll be impacting the United States over the next several days. And we'll begin with what's happening today, which right now we have our jet stream dipped a little bit over here to the east coast, which we have our trough low located mainly back over in the northeast which will be weakening throughout the day today but this is also going to help to bring some colder weather to areas along the east coast over the next few days eventually by the weekend a ridge is going to briefly build across the southern plains but it really will not last that long we're going to actually start to see the return of severe weather as early as friday across parts of the central and southern plains even possibly tomorrow in areas like texas and oklahoma due to some mesoscale features that could allow for severe weather so generally speaking this upper level ridge is not really going to do much, but it will build some warmer weather, and we're going to have to watch for our next storm system, which is going to come from the west coast here. I also want to point out, back over in the Midwest, we actually have a northwesterly flow here. What this will help to do is bring a lot of colder weather out of Canada. There is also a low chance, maybe Friday or Saturday, that we get a line of storm somewhere over here, but I think the odds of that are low to do a lack of moisture, but typically when we have northwesterly flow this time of the year, lines of thunderstorms do often happen, so just something to keep an eye on, especially as we go into June. By Saturday, our low pressure system will move over the Rockies. Off the bat, you'll notice that we have very weak upper level winds. So generally speaking, this is not expected to be a very strong storm system, but it is notable because it will likely be our next big severe weather maker as we go into Sunday and Monday. I do think there will be enough here for there to at least be one day where we have a potential severe weather outbreak across parts of the central and southern plains. Whether that is tornadoes, hail, or wind is still uncertain, but I do think areas back over here, especially on Sunday and Monday, need to be staying weather aware for at least some scattered severe weather. I'm not saying, again, we're going to see something like what we just saw over the last six or seven days, but it is definitely something we need to keep an eye on. Eventually, by Wednesday and Thursday, that low pressure system will just spin over the Midwest, and another low pressure system will try to move over the Rockies, which could also bring more severe weather. And as we go into June, I do think our weather pattern will stay relatively active, and I do think we'll continue to see multiple events of severe weather. Now, let's put this into more simplistic terms with our future radar over the next few days, beginning with today. Today, showers, thunderstorms, and isolated severe weather will continue along the East Coast, which we'll talk more about the severe weather threat in a few minutes. This will eventually move into the New, New England area as we go into Thursday, just spinning up some rain really more than anything. And then as we go into Friday, a surface-based high pressure system will build across the Ohio Valley in the Midwest, which will keep things quiet at least for Friday and Saturday. And then on Saturday, a low pressure system will move over the Rockies and should lead to the return of at least some isolated severe weather Friday night. And then on Saturday, it's 
a pretty similar trend. This low pressure system will be kind of flirting with the Rockies. There could be some isolated to scattered severe weather, but again, generally speaking, it's going to probably be limited by a cap. But on Sunday and Monday is when I think things really start to ramp up here, where we are expecting at least some more scattered to numerous severe weather, especially on Sunday, back over in Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas, and even back over in Missouri and Arkansas, where damaging winds, large hail, and maybe even a few tornadoes will be a possibility. And then on Monday, the storm system moves to the east, likely with another round of severe weather stretching from central Texas all the way back through Tennessee and the Dixie Alley. And then eventually, as we go into Tuesday, the storm system will move towards the east coast, where there could be still some isolated severe weather left over. So generally speaking, I do think Sunday and Monday do have the potential to be severe weather events that could be a bit more significant, maybe a slight enhanced type day of severe weather. And then by the middle and end of the week, that low pressure system spins out back over in the northeast, and we should continue to see at least some severe weather in the southern plains even by the end of the week, despite there being some high pressure system near the surface. There will likely still be some mesoscale events there, and then eventually by the beginning of June, which is very far out from now, we have no clue what's going to happen, but I do expect that there will be more severe weather events across the Great Plains, and it should stay fairly active. Now, with this weather pattern, we are expecting actually some pretty cold weather for the next week or two, and this is mainly because of all of our low pressure systems. So over the next few days, cold weather will continue across the Ohio Valley in the northeast with below average temperatures, and above average temperatures will continue in the southern plains. As we go into early next week, more cold weather is going to usher in right into the Ohio Valley, the southeast, and across the Midwest, so expect at least some below average temperatures during the middle and end of next week. And even by next weekend, we're basically going to continue to deal with the same weather pattern as long as we keep continuing to see these low pressure systems in the Ohio Valley and as well as across the Great Plains, which we will likely see this at least for the next seven to 10 days. And then warmer weather will likely return as we go into early June for many areas in the Ohio Valley. And the Climate Prediction Center agrees with this because between Monday of next week all the way through Friday, below average temperatures are likely across a large chunk of the Northeast back into the Ohio Valley and the Southern Plains. And then above average temperatures are likely if you're anywhere to the West or even in the Rocky Mountains. Now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days, beginning with today. We have multiple risks of severe weather, believe it or not. We got five different areas. We got one over in Ohio and West Virginia. We got another one back over in North Carolina and Virginia, then another one in Florida, another one in Texas, and then one back over in the Central Plains. I've never seen this before, where we have five different areas in a risk of severe weather, and they're all very different. But for the most part, hail and wind will be the main concerns today, and it's pretty isolated in nature. But there is a low chance for an isolated tornado, especially back over in eastern North Carolina, where we actually have a 5% tornado risk in place for approximately 100,000 people. So make sure that you're staying weather aware. There's also a very low chance of a tornado just to the southwest of Pittsburgh. And then as we go into tossing trampolines on tall trees Thursday, we have a large marginal threat of severe weather across the southern plains and another one back over into Florida, where the main concern will be damaging winds and hail. And I also think a tornado is possible, mainly back over to the northeast of Dallas-Fort Worth, back over near Texarkana, and also near the Red River Valley. Valley. There is actually a chance that we go live tomorrow if this threat does look a little bit more concerning, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified if we do go live. And then on Friday, the risk of severe weather returns to the Great Plains, mainly across Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Missouri, and another one back over in Florida, where the main concern will be isolated hail and wind, and our tornado risk, generally speaking, looks low for now on Friday. So here's the timing for today. We'll have some scattered showers and storms out there this morning across multiple areas along the East Coast. By around lunchtime, a few storms will start to fire off across Ohio and West Virginia with isolated hail and wind, and a few will be firing in, e in eastern North Carolina where hail and wind are the main concerns, but an isolated tornado is possible. By around 2 to 3 o'clock, these storms are moving towards Pittsburgh where, generally speaking, these are going to really start to weaken. More than anything, just isolated wind and hail will continue as that moves towards State College in Pennsylvania, and then we're basically done. So overall, we have a very short window for tornadoes today. It's going to be probably about an hour or two long at most, just to the south west of Pennsylvania, where there will be a localized area of wind shear, and if any storms are discreet, that'll be where we see a potential tornado threat. Same thing back, basically back over North Carolina. It'll be any time from about right now up until about 1 o'clock, where we could see an isolated tornado. And then back over in the southern plains, we are expecting the risk of severe weather tomorrow afternoon and into the early evening. Storms are likely going to fire off here across northeast Texas during the early afternoon, mainly with a hail and wind risk initially. Could see an isolated spin-up tornado. There's actually going to be a little bit of wind shear here in this environment, very localized area. So wouldn't rule out a tornado here. And then by around five, six o'clock, these storms will be splitting all over the place in North Texas. We might also see a few more storms fire off back over near Abilene and Wichita Falls with hail and wind being a possibility and a very low tornado risk out of those storms. These will likely fall apart
part as we get closer to midnight. So generally speaking, it's almost an all-day threat, it looks like right now, in Texas and southeastern Oklahoma. But I think it's going to be a pretty isolated risk in nature. Hail should be the main concern, a little bit of wind, and maybe a tornado. And if the tornado threat does actually look, you know, something that might be a concern, we will likely be live. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified with the latest updates. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. We'll have another video sometime tomorrow talking about this big storm system that's going to be coming Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and we'll see you guys all again in the next forecast.